Anna Bashekiova. Hi, Anna. yeah, my team is here. <laughs> okay, Anna, it's your turn. You can start with your presentation. Yes, we have a pre-recorded uh, presentation, so I will share my screen and then uh, we can watch the presentation. If that's all right. So let me see. Mm. Can. Mm. I think I need to check whether I can also share a web page. I think, yeah, I can. Okay, sorry. Do you see my screen? Yeah, we can see it on this. Okay, great. Yes. Then I will start the presentation. I think we can't hear it. Sorry, was someone saying something? Um, sorry, it was me. I personally can't hear it. I don't know about the others. I cannot hear it also. Yeah. Oh, that is weird because I do hear it. Huh. Um, let me see what I can do. Anna, I don't know if you have also the recording with you, so that we can try that. So. Um, yeah, um, try yours and um, I'll find the recording meanwhile. Because... Still not? No. No. Okay. no All right, wait. Then I will stop sharing. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Fantastic. I'm um, sorry about that. Um, we're going to try to play it from mine. Um, hello and welcome to our presentation. Um, we will be presenting the research that we have conducted, taking an adaptive modeling approach to employee burnout in the context of the big five personality traits. So burnout is a syndrome which has devastating health and lifestyle consequences for individuals um, and bears a large financial and operational cost on organizations. In this research, we utilize the three dimension definition of burnout, characterized by emotional exhaustion, depersonalization and reduced personal accomplishment. While there are overarching importance to the syndrome, each individual has a unique experience of burnout. And this is largely due to the individual personality traits that impact things like stress perception and threat experience. The five factors model is one of the main research paradigms which has been used to explore the personality burnout relationship. The big five personality traits are emotional stability, extroversion, conscientiousness, openness, and agreeableness. And while all have been found to relate to burnout, one's emotional stability has been found to be the most predictive for burnout development. So an individual who is highly neurotic would be more prone to experiencing strong negative emotions and would have a higher risk of developing burnout across three dimensions. Personality and work environment both shape one's predisposition and development of burnout. In order to understand that interaction, we looked at the job demands and resources model for environmental influences. Um, in accordance to the recent literature reviews, we modeled um, workload, interpersonal conflict, and job insecurity as job demands, and job autonomy and social support as job resources. Um, so the focus for the focus of our um, our presentation. Our aim was to include, uh, to introduce a relatively new research paradigm to study burnout development, namely um, adaptive network modeling. Building upon, upon empirical evidence for the job demands resources model in relation 
to burnout and the big five personality traits. The adaptive model in this paper treats burnout as a dynamic and adaptive interplay between personality traits and perception of job demands and resources. Due to the adaptive nature of the model, it can, it can investigate how changes in a particular job demand and, or resource can impact burnout and how that relates to personality change. In the second part of the paper, we investigated whether the introduction of an individual level intervention, in this case, mindfulness-based cognitive therapy, can alter ones in our environmental perceptions and reduce neuroticism. The adaptivity of the model allowed for a realistic representation of a complex dynamics of ex internal and external factors that contribute to the development of burnout and helps to give insight into the potential effects of burnout related therapy, which have um, not yet been thoroughly researched. Um, and now for the design. Having the so-called adaptive temporal causal network base in mind, uh, we tried to base our design on existing literature that supports our proposal to create a mathematical blueprint, if you will, of the dynamics of the nodes and the characteristics of the network with the help of declarative mathematical functions and relations. The adaptivity of the network is modeled according to the principle of self-modeling or reification, which means that each adaptive network characteristic, a state, is added to the network called self model state or reification state, which represents this adaptive uh, network feature. The network characteristics for this model uh, approach are described as follows. Connectivity characteristics representing the connection strength between the states, aggregation characteristics used to aggregate multiple incoming impacts on a certain state, and timing characteristics representing the timing of the impact on a certain state. In our design, we use the A logistic function, which is obtained from the classical simple logistic sum function and has values between zero and one. Neuroscientific literature shows a distinction between synaptic and non-synaptic plasticity or adaptation. These concepts have been translated to our model by introducing self-model states of synaptic plasticity of the form WXIY to represent the adaptive weight of the connection between two states. As for non-synaptic plasticity for excitability thresholds, we introduce self-model states of the form TY to represent the adaptive excitability threshold of state Y where lower excitability threshold means higher excitability or more sensitive, and a higher excitability threshold means less sensitive. Now, uh, for the adaptive causal network model, um, at the base level of the adaptive model, we included job demands and resources, building upon empirical evidence for the job demands resources model in relation to burnout. Central to the model is, however, the perception, as the main focus of the paper is investigating how the perception of job demands and resources changes the big personality trait, the big five personality traits, in response to external changes and therapy. The base level also includes the three dimensions of burnout, which are emotional exhaustion, depersonalization, and reduced personal accomplishment. We therefore added a uh, therapy factor in the base level model since there is reason to believe that certain types of individual therapy, for example, mindfulness cognitive based therapy, can reduce burnout symptoms by adjusting people's perception of reality to a perception without emotional or intellectual distortions. Lastly, we included an external state factor in the base level model to introduce a particular external change, for example, the appointment of a new manager in a person's team. For the first order reification level of our model, we include the big five personality traits designed as adaptive state directly related to the self-model state of the network characteristics, as their main aim is to modulate the base level process. As personality changes have been found to be predictive of changes in one's perception of the work environment and experience. That gave us reason to include things in our model from the personality traits to the W states representing the weight of the connection between perception and job demands and resources. Lastly, for the second reification level, uh, which is tackling the adaptivity of personality traits over time and in response to various external factors factors mentioned above. Um, in order to account for the potential changes in personality traits, a second order verification level is that. 
Here, five uh, excitability threshold G states are appended, each linking to one personality trait. We found evidence that there are links between job demands towards personality traits, um, and therefore we added links from some of the base level job demands and resources towards the G state. Based on the mod mathematical model described uh, before, we experimented with two different scenarios exploring the effects of highly neurotic personality traits on the chances to develop burnout with and without therapy. Here is the uh, scenario. Yeah. So the focus of scenario one was how particular changes in the work environment can impact the development of burnout and cross personality alterations. To simulate scenario one, we focused on neuroticism as a dominant personality trait. You see the simplified model um, on the slide. The yellow nodes represent the focus of the scenario. So for this scenario, we wanted to simulate how a person high in neuroticism would react to a change in external circumstances. In this case, the appointment of a new manager. We set up the scenario in such a way that the new manager would change the person's perception of autonomy from high to lower. Because job autonomy is a job resource, according to the JDR model, it functions as a protective factor against the three burnout dimension. Less job autonomy carries the risk of increasing the experience of emotional exhaustion, depersonalization, and reduced personal accomplishment. In this scenario, the impact that, it, um, that the exper experience lower autonomy has on the person's feeling of depersonalization is especially interesting because when a person becomes more depers depersonalized as a result of less autonomy, so the person becomes more disconnected to the job and more cynical, this increases the risk of interpersonal conflict. Research shows that interpersonal conflict has a strong impact on individuals high in neuroticism. This means that when a person that is already high in neuroticism experiences interpersonal conflict, they may be, more, they may be prone to become more neurotic because of the stress the conflict causes. So it is simulated that higher interpersonal conflict makes the person slightly more neurotic uh, which in turn increases the chance of developing burnout. Um, so now for the simulation. Um, here you can see the graph for, for the simulation of this scenario, because um, as a, um, a neuroticism is the dominant personality trait, the initial value for it is uh, high, as well as um, the initial value for the external state. And the connection from the external state to the W state of autonomy um, is set to a negative vector of minus one. Since we wanted to simulate uh, that because of um, the appointment of a new manager, as the perception of autonomy becomes lower. In the graph, you see that when the perception of autonomy becomes lower, the depersonalization, as well as the other three di two dimensions of burnout, are getting higher, and also the perception of interpersonal conflict increases. Uh, we also see that the perception of interpersonal conflict uh, goes up, um, together with uh, the um, value for the neuroticism. We consciously chose to set the speed factors of all personal, personality uh, traits, um, as well as neuroticism, to very low because although research shows that personality is malleable, these changes did not go very fast. Um, fantastic. So for scenario two, um, we built an adaptive model um, in scenario one through introducing the external influence of mindfulness-based cognitive therapy. So mindfulness is described as awareness and acceptance of ongoing emotional experiences, which can act as a protective factor against neuroticism. Mindfulness-based interventions have been proposed as an alternative to one-to-one -one cognitive behavioral interventions because they have been found to be more targeted to neuroticism and also to be more cost-effective. So empirical evidence through randomized controlled trials suggests that patients with high neurotic levels who have undergone mindfulness-based um, cognitive therapy have decreased levels of neuroticism, undergoing profound changes such as lower levels of rumination and higher levels of decentering and compassion. Evidence within the workplace is limited. However, evidence does show that mindfulness-based interventions were effective in reducing negative psychological effects of the working environment, particularly job demands. Um, mindfulness cognitive-based therapy allows individuals to see themselves as separate from their moods and thoughts. It decreases their reactivity to their environment. It helps them break out of the cycle of ruminative thinking. 
Um, so an individual can, over time, learn to perceive work stressors, such as the interpersonal conflict that we mentioned in scenario one, in a non-reactionary, less ruminative way. Um, and now for the simulation. Uh, we're simulating the scenario for the impact of individual therapy on the development of burnout with a person with high neuroticism. At a technical level, we initiate the therapy state with a relatively higher value than the rest of uh, the traits as we, and as expected, we can observe its positive impact on all three dimensions of burnout. The most dramatic change can be seen, however, in the reduced personality, the personal accomplishment as it drastically decreases after 25 iterations, which is reason enough to believe that therapy can have a strong positive impact. In addition to that, the graph shows quite early in the simulation a decrease in emotional exhaustion, which is reduced to zero only after five iterations. As for the depersonalization, the decreasing effect is not as dramatic as in the other two states. However, the graph clearly shows an ongoing slow decrease. As such, the simulation of this scenario in a second order adaptive model shows that the introduction of therapy on a person high in neuroticism changes their perception to work environmental aspects positively, hence causing a decrease in the chance of developing a burnout. So the results of the simulations are promising. Um, the first simulation showed that, as expected, neuroticism slightly increased as a result of increased interpersonal conflict due to the perceived lower autonomy. Hence, the simulation of scenario one showed that it is indeed possible to simulate a scenario where neuroticism is adaptive. The second simulation showed that the response to therapy of a person high in neuroticism indeed causes a decrease in emotional exhaustion and, therefore, a decrease in the chance of developing burnout. Also, um, the contribution to the current literature is twofold. On one hand, we extended earlier research findings by introducing personality traits and job demands and resources as adaptive, interconnected nodes that could change over time and predict burnout development. And on the other hand, the paper demonstrates the potential mindfulness cognitive-based therapy um, to reduce neuroticism in organizational settings, in addition to the clinical and the subclinical settings. And for the future research, um, for the future research, while we now have focused solely on neuroticism as a personality trait in relation to job autonomy, it would be interesting to experiment further with the concept of adaptive personality traits. So looking whether other personality traits can also be adaptive in relation to specific changes in the work environment could be an example of uh, possible future research. Also, um, it could uh, extend simulations focused on several interventions in order to compare the effectiveness of various inter interventions on personality trait change and burnout reduction. Um, as we now focus only on a individual level therapy, um, organizational level interventions are also extremely interesting to include in the model and explore their potential uh, effects. Um, yeah. Thank you for listening to the presentation. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's it. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Right. Nice. <laughs> you wrote and you have a research, research topic very interesting. And now it's time for the question. Any question for, for the vote? Any question? No? Well, thank you. Thank you for your presentation. This vlog we will close and, and next with the other paper more late. Thank you so much for Anna. Anna thank you. Thank you so much. You. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.